In this video, I am going to deep dive into the most important piece of crypto infrastructure and also the biggest pain point in crypto, which is presenting massive opportunities over the next few years. And of course, that is the wallet in crypto. Sometimes you might think it's boring to talk about wallets in crypto, but when we think about it, the wallet is the sole piece of infrastructure which onboards users, which users first experience and liken their first experience in crypto to. It is such an important piece of infrastructure and the the projects that get it right, they can expose themselves to millions of new users and the projects that get it wrong can cause havoc in the crypto market. And I want to explain why I'm choosing to make this video now. I'll be running through the top wallets, the pros and the cons of each wallet as well um, as their respective tokens. But the reason I'm doing it in today's show is because of what has happened this year with centralized exchanges. Now, obviously, throughout the entirety of 2020. Two, we've seen a plethora of centralized issues with lenders and exchanges like FTX, like BlockFi, like Celsius, like Voyager, and it really emphasized the importance of self-custody. You need to keep custody of your own assets, but how do you keep custody of your own assets? Well, obviously through having your own crypto wallet. So the best wallets, the ones that have the best infrastructure, the ones that are the most intuitive and the ones that have the best UI, these are the ones that are going to grab all the users that are flowing out of centralized exchanges as there is more mistrust there than ever into the DeFi ecosystem and the wallet is such an important part of the ecosystem for that reason. And we can see over the last seven days, we've seen massive outflows from basically every single exchange, especially Coinbase and Binance with the net withdrawal approximately around one and a half billion dollars. FTX, eight billion dollars were withdrawn and now we can see that Bitcoin and ETH balances on centralized exchanges have hit their lowest level since 2018. Now it's clearer than ever that DeFi is inevitable. Ledger, off the back of all this, they had their biggest sales day ever post FTX and so did Trezor. They are hardware wallets and we are going to break down them as well in today's video. And of course, in recent times, we also had some of the dramas related to MetaMask IPs where it was revealed that Infura, one of the RPC providers of MetaMask, is collecting IP addresses from Ethereum wallet addresses whenever you send a transaction. So then there was a lot of panic as to, well, maybe we shouldn't use MetaMask because um, our IPs aren't private. So this has put more emphasis on some of the wallet alternatives in crypto. Now, there are two different kinds of wallets in crypto, and this is very important to understand. There are hot wallets. Now, hot wallets are cryptocurrency wallets that are always connected to the internet. For example, MetaMask and Trust Wallet. And then you also have your cold wallets. This is like your Trezor and your Ledger, where you actually store your crypto offline. Now, this is very good for long-term storage. If you plan on holding Bitcoin and Ethereum for 5, 10 years, and you don't want to interact with any dApps, then, it's, then it makes sense to store those assets on a cold wallet like a Trezor and a Ledger. But if you are planning on actively participating in DeFi, maybe trading with some of your coins as well on, on, a, on a decentralized exchange like Gains Network, or even just doing some swaps um, on one of the DEXs like KyberSwap, then you are going to need a hot wallet because that is what you're going to use to connect to dApps to use DeFi. So it's always a good idea to have both, but it's an important distinguishment to make um, as to how these different wallets work. So the first type of wallets that I'm going to break down in today's show are hot wallets. I'm going to run you through my five favorite wallets and give you a breakdown of their pros and their cons so you can make a better decision as to how to use your wallet or maybe you can make a decision to diversify into other wallets. Now, of course, MetaMask is the main wallet in crypto. This is the wallet with the most users, over 40 million users. It's a crypto wallet and gateway to blockchain apps. It's become the gold standard of wallets. But in my opinion, even though it's become the gold standard, in terms of usability, there are better products in my opinion. The Phantom Wallet on Solana, for example, I do prefer the UI. Block Wallet, I prefer the UI. And there are other wallets with better integrations with NFTs, etc. So MetaMask is quite weird because I don't view this as the destination of where wallets need to go. For users to truly be onboarded uh, into crypto and have a truly positive DeFi experience, we need products with better UI than what MetaMask is currently offering, in my opinion. And although I don't think it's a bad product by any means, it's a, you know, it's a very well-featured wallet. I still think long-term, this is not how the future of crypto looks. The future of crypto, in my opinion, 
um, means using a wallet that you don't even know you're using crypto. Something so seamless that integrates with iOS and integrates with the web um, browser seamlessly and easily. And I don't think we're quite there yet, but clearly MetaMask is the gold standard. Now it has some pros and it has some cons. It's very easy to set up. It literally takes 30 seconds. If I didn't already have a MetaMask on this computer, I'd show you, but you literally just add it to your Google Chrome or click download and you can do it in a matter of just a few seconds. You can earn rewards via staking and holding. There's also um, rumors that there's going to be an airdrop one day. Um, if there is, I think it'll be quite diluted, but that's certainly a possibility. MetaMask users can earn additional tokens through airdrops and staking. Staking is the process of locking up tokens in a vault for a certain period to make an APR or APY. It supports a broad range of Ethereum-based tokens. It's across multiple networks and it is a central hub for dApps. Their cons is there's no coin to fiat conversion, so it doesn't support third-party remittance companies. This just like decreases its flexibility slightly. Also, their customer support is not very good. They have a lot of users, not a lot of customer support, and overall the UI is quite janky. And of course, you do have um, that MetaMask problem as well uh, that has kind of come to light to the limelight that you know since they use Infura as an RPC provider, technically they have access to your IP addresses. So I do think there are better alternatives, but MetaMask is still the most used wallet in crypto. But one of the major downsides of MetaMask, and this isn't just exclusive to MetaMask, many other wallets as well, um, hot wallets specifically, is that Bitcoin support is still not great. So you can't actually store Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network on MetaMask. There are other wallets, which I'll get to at the end of the hot wallet section, which are much better options for you Bitcoin holders. But Bitcoin right now is not so good on MetaMask. But I guess like every single wallet, it is good in the respect that it has very good connectivity to dApps. And if we look at uh, Gains Network as an example, if you click connect wallet in the top right, it is very seamless to actually connect your wallet to an application like Gains. By the way, Gains um, is a great network to do your trading on. So if you want to trade not on a centralized exchange, as I alluded to before, there are issues with trading on centralized exchanges that are now uh, more pertinent than ever. You can do so on a decentralized exchange with low fees um, and you can do so on the G trade platform on gains network so there's a link in the description um if you would like to trade on gains um and i also did a full tutorial on uh gains network if you want to check that out which shows you how to essentially trade and use uh the network and take advantage of their staking functions but obviously you can connect to any dap through a metamask um and it opens the door up for decentralized trading like this which is really really cool but there are other options the second option i want to look at and this isn't in order of preference by the way this is just in order of size um is trust wallet. Now, Trust Wallet is uh, the second biggest crypto wallet with over 25 million plus users. Trust Wallet was actually purchased by Binance in 2018. So it is a Binance made product. Now it has big backing and it is quite a good app. I feel like the iOS version of Trust Wallet is much better than the iOS version of MetaMask. So for those guys that like to do some uh, DeFi stuff on their phones, I feel like Trust Wallet may be a better alternative for you uh, than MetaMask. The pros are it supports a lot of assets assets. It's very easy to set up as well. And once again, this is a better mobile solution than MetaMask in my opinion. Just like uh, MetaMask, it's non-custodial. It allows you to interact with dApps. It does have staking options. So there's 12 inbuilt staking options, something MetaMask doesn't have. For example, BNB, Tron, Tezos, Cosmos, VeChain, straight from the wallet itself, uh, which is quite handy. Whereas MetaMask, you need to connect to dApps first. Um, but the cons are, is no cold storage. So it doesn't integrate with Ledger yet, although they are saying they're going to do it soon. So hopefully there's a firmware update there. Like many wallets, the customer support isn't great. It's a little bit better than MetaMask, but still not great. Private Android source code, so it's not open source. Um, although the iOS version is available on GitHub and no iOS DAP browser. So it will, instead of um, having a DAP browser straight into the wallet, it'll ping you off to Chrome or Safari um, when you are making transactions on the wallet. But they do now have a browser extension that you can use on your Google Chrome because they were primarily an iOS based app. Now you have the option of using the desktop version, which is cool. And of course, Binance is a major backer there. So there's good integration between Binance. So if you have a Binance account, um, the integration with Binance Pay and Trust Wallet is very, very handy. So I like Trust Wallet a lot. 
wallet, I'd say it's it's up there amongst my favorite wallets. Now, the next wallet I want to talk about is Block Wallet. And now this is one that I think has one of the best UIs out of any single wallet. And it also has inbuilt staking, which obviously MetaMask doesn't have. So that's a huge plus. And there are also many other features coming soon to Block Wallet as well. Um, the major draw card here is the UI. Uh, it's accepted by most dApps and it's pretty good um, on the DeFi front. So if you're a guy that likes to do a lot of D or a girl, of course, that likes to do a lot of DeFi and enjoys like doing a lot of staking and interacting with dApps, Block Wallet's a good choice. Probably doesn't have the same iOS functionality as uh, Trust Wallet, but for the web guys that do a lot of DeFi, I think it's very, very good. Here are five reasons that the team states to use Block Wallet. One, UX. Um, taking ownership of your crypto shouldn't be complicated. Just make sure you choose the right option. I agree. I think the UX is very, very good. Um, this is the difference between Block Wallet and MetaMask when adding custom networks. So, on the left, you have Block Wallet. On the right, you have MetaMask. And it's just much, much, much easier to add new networks and navigate through the UI on Block Wallet versus MetaMask, which is a very janky system. In fact, um, on MetaMask, it takes 45 seconds. On Block Wallet, it takes 12 seconds. Swapping is a breeze. So there's a video of swapping um, on the platform as well, which is very fast, very easy to swap between assets. Uh, that is very handy. MetaMask does have swapping. But once again, I think the Block Wallet UI is just a little bit better, in my opinion. It's reliable. Um, they're not dependent on a single node provider. So you know how the IP issues with MetaMask came to light. They're not the same. They have multiple um, node providers, which definitely can prevent some issues from occurring. They have better support than some of the alternatives and they have hardware wallet support um, like Ledger and Trezor as well. But so does MetaMask and so does um, Trust Wallet in terms of, of, of compatibility there. By the way, um, before I get into my next couple wallet picks, all the wallets that I talk about in today's video, there is a link in the description. So if you want to sign up to any of these, if you want to try out Block Wallet, if you want to try out Trust Wallet, if you want to try out some of the ones I'll talk about in a second that I think are cool um, for Bitcoin staking specifically as well, then you can do so using the link in the description. I want this to be the ultimate guide to wallet. So it's all in the description for you to access in a very simple and easy way. And I don't want you guys to get scammed. So all the links in the description will be the verified links as well, because it's there's actually some scams going around where you search up MetaMask, you search up Trust Wallet, and there'll be ads of not the real website um, that are kind of phishing scams. So you put in uh, your data or you transfer money there and you, you don't get it back. So just use the link in the description, stay safe, um, and that can help avoid some pain. I don't know if there'll be referral links yet um, because this video is coming out a week after I'm recording it. Potentially there are, some of them will be referrals to support me, um, but it'll be explicitly stated in the link if it isn't. But Block Wallet is a good alternative. Now, the wallet I want to talk about now is is, in my opinion, one of the best crypto wallets we've ever seen, and that is the Phantom Wallet on Solana. And the reasons why it is so good is because its iOS um, functionality was fantastic, its NFT uh, displaying functions were fantastic, and it was just it just had a very, very good UI. And I think to this day, this is one of the gold standards of how to create a crypto wallet. And they're also going to be launching on Ethereum soon and other networks as well. So the major downside is that they're only on Solana and then they're doing Ethereum and Polygon next. However, they aren't on every single network yet. And unlike MetaMask or Block Wallet, where you can connect to basically any EVM network, they aren't on Ethereum or Polygon yet, although that is coming, of course. But right now they're just on Solana. Um, but they were one of the best wallets on Solana. Maybe that's also due to the fact that Solana is quite fast when it's working. Solana is a really, really great network to use actually. Um, and although it does have some issues at times, it's generally pretty seamless. So that probably plays into it a little bit. But Phantom is a great example of a, of a good wallet. Um, and they're adding Polygon support. Um, they're obviously adding Ethereum support as well. So they are expanding and I'm excited to see what they do. Um, of course, there's a lot more to come in the wallet story. It's not over. There, there is so much we can do to make wallets better in crypto. Um, right now, I think this is just version one of potentially the next 10 versions of wallet uh, iterations that we'll get over the next decade or so. And there's one that I'll talk about in a minute, which I think is doing a really good job at innovating, which is important as well. Phantom versus MetaMask um, obviously has Solana. MetaMask doesn't. So for the for you soul guys out there, you'll probably enjoy using Phantom and you probably do use Phantom. And it does have a phone app, um, which MetaMask doesn't have the greatest phone app. Although it's saying it doesn't have a phone app there. It does have one. It's just not as good. The other one I want to talk about is the Coinbase wallet. I think this one is quite good good 
if you are a Coinbase customer because of the integrations they have. And I know Coinbase is one of the only regulated US uh, exchanges. So if you are in the US, using this wallet could make sense. The phone app is quite good as well. It integrates with Coinbase and also uh, for Australia as well. It's a regulated company. So that is a benefit. And Coinbase's wallet overall, it has some decent pros. Um, it's pretty easy to download and set up. It's a very simple app layout. It supports a lot of cryptos, 100,000 plus cryptos. It's easy to transfer assets. But once again, customer support, limited support for NFT. So it's NFT um, support isn't great, but I think that's a problem that's not just exclusive to the Coinbase wallet. It's across crypto in general. So that is one of the issues there. But the Coinbase wallet is compatible with a lot of DeFi. So if we look at Nested Finance, which is the app that I use to DCA and create portfolios, you can connect a Coinbase wallet directly to it. If you click, I have another Web3 wallet, it'll prompt you to connect a Coinbase wallet, Wallet Connect and MetaMask as well. So um, it's interesting integration is quite good with a lot of dApps, Nested being one of them. By the way, if you want to DCA into any crypto assets, Nested is a great place to do so. There's a link in the description to a portfolio that I personally created, um, which I'm going to be working on over time that allows you to DCA into the market with me. Um, or you can create your own portfolio on Nested by clicking my portfolios and creating a portfolio, of course, connecting one of your wallets. Um, and you can also copy other people's portfolios. So that's a cool platform that has good integration with Coinbase and also MetaMask and the other wallets as well. Now, the next one I want to talk about, which has a very interesting solution um, to one of the biggest pain points in crypto, and that is the seed phrase, which is basically the issue of if your seed phrase gets lost, if your seed phrase gets stolen, if it somehow gets misplaced, um, it's a big issue because then you lose custody of your assets. There's no verifiable way to verify um, identity on chain yet. Those solutions are coming, but that's a big pain point. And also, um, but aside from seed phrases, a very big pain point of crypto is just the general experience of wallets and the general UI of wallets just not being up to scratch and making DeFi very clunky. Well, Giddy is a, a new wallet, which I think as a project are embarking on a very interesting mission. And this is essentially moving into the self-custody space. It is a recoverable non-custodial wallet, which does not require a seed phrase. So it's a very unique take on what the wallet can be. The commercial is actually um, quite funny if you want to check that out. Um, it's called Giddy Grow Your Crypto. But I think they're doing a, a pretty good job here of innovating on the wallet side and their UI is quite strong. So this is one to look out for. They're not launched everywhere. The integrations aren't the best yet, but I think one day this could be a good project. They do have a token. I've spoken about that in the past. Block Wallet also has a token. Trust Wallet also has a token. Of course, when we get into the token discussion, we have to talk in very different terms because it's not necessarily about the product primarily. It's also about the tokenomics. Um, and you know that factors in into questions like how is the token used? Is it used to power swaps or a fees sent back to stakers of that specific token? Um, what's the utility of the token? What's the supply schedule of the token, etc.? That That's not really what today's video is about. But but I will say that the ones that do solve this wallet problem um, and the ones that do get the most users in this space, their respective tokens should perform well off the back of that if their tokenomics are good. Giddy, I had some issues with its tokenomics, but I won't get too much into that today. Um, I do think it just needs utility though, as a, uh, more utility as a TLDR. So it's going to be very cool to see um, Giddy starting to gain some traction as well. Now, I want to talk about Bitcoin wallets because hot wallets for Bitcoin are completely different because Bitcoin is is not accepted by a lot of network providers, MetaMask being one that doesn't actually allow you to add the Bitcoin network. One solution for this that allows you to stake, that allows you to add liquidity and swap your Bitcoin on chain in a hot wallet is DeFi Chain. Now, DeFi Chain has a very good wallet interface that allows you to not only store your Bitcoin, but also use it to provide liquidity and swap. So if you want to have basically a MetaMask for your Bitcoin um, that gives you uh, accessibility to DeFi using your Bitcoin, which is not something that is very easy in crypto today unless you wrap it, but there's a lot of issues with wrapping. If you want to keep your Bitcoin native, you can do so on DeFi Chain and keep your Bitcoin in this wallet. So it's a very, very, very good wallet for Bitcoin. And there's a link in the description to do so. They're also a show sponsor um, to download this from the downloads page. Once again, 
Link in the description if you want to activate your Bitcoin in DeFi um, or even if you just want to keep it in your wallet, you can do so on DeFi chain and it's got quite an interesting ecosystem. A second Bitcoin wallet that you can look at is Exodus. This is a wallet that I used for a while um, to store my Bitcoin and I honestly found it a great experience. Um, they have fiat on-ramps, which is quite good. So you can buy crypto directly with USD, um, euros and great British pounds that avoids you having to use an exchange. Of course, you do pay some fees using that, but you can even use Apple Pay on Exodus Mobile. So there are um, pretty good integrations here uh, with on-ramping and the app is very, very good. I used this for a while, as I said, for my own Bitcoin and I found it to be a very good exchange for Bitcoin. Um, you can also access some dApps through it as well. Uh, it's probably not as good for your altcoins. I think Exodus is just much better as a Bitcoin Ethereum wallet. Um, so I kind of put it in a different category. But for those holding Bitcoin, I think... Exodus is a great wallet as well. One of the pros is it's easy to set up. It only supports 291 cryptos, but still that is quite a lot of assets. They have very good customer service. This is the major differentiator between Exodus and a lot of the other wallets. Their customer service is actually quite good. They have a live chat, email support, which is quite helpful. MetaMask, of course, it kind of is very difficult to do that. Um, they've got staking. So it does support proof of stake blockchains. This means that you can actually stake proof of stake coins through the wallet itself. Um, and also they have regular software updates to keep improving the product over time. The cons, a lack of security. So they didn't have two-factor authentication at the time this article was written. No support for crypto to fiat conversion. So there is fiat to crypto, but no crypto to fiat. That's kind of a luxury when it comes to wallets, but still it's something that I think will be nice. It's not open source and it lacks a lot of custom fee support for altcoins. One of the reasons why I use other exchanges for altcoins, but it, that's very valid um, when it comes to Bitcoin. I want to talk about cold wallets now because we talked about the hot wallets. There are some great options in that category and there's a lot of innovation happening in that space as well. But of course, if you're a long-term holder and you want to keep your assets safe, the safest way to keep them safe is to have them on a ledger or a trezor. Now, there is ledger and trezor compatibility with hot wallets. So if you have a ledger or a trezor, you can actually lock a MetaMask wallet into a trezor or a ledger that means your funds are only accessible if you have the ledger on you, but you can do it through the MetaMask interface. It's the same for Block Wallet. It's the same for Trust Wallet. It's the same for many other wallets in crypto. But what I'm talking about now is their own proprietary interfaces, which allow you to store Bitcoin and altcoins if you don't want to connect them to hot wallets. So having a Trezor or a ledger, it is a must in my opinion. You need to have one irrespective if you have a um, MetaMask or a Block Wallet or a Trust Wallet or an Exodus Wallet because you can, act you can actually connect them to these wallets because they're compatible. Um, and that allows you to keep your assets on a hardware wallet and also use DeFi when you want to. But you also have the choice of using their own software. If you're a long-term holder and you don't want to risk running um, and you don't want to risk hooking it up to a hot wallet and you just want to keep it cold, this is where these wallets come into play. Now, there is a link in the description. If you want to buy a Trezor or a Ledger, I highly suggest that you do so. Um, once again, link in the description if you want to purchase one of these. I think it'll be a very worthwhile um, investment to keep your assets safe. Before I head off with this video, I also want to shout out one of our sponsors, Apex, which is a decentralized exchange. If you are keeping your funds on a wallet, you are also going to need places to trade um, connecting to that wallet. And the very good thing about Apex um, and other similar uh, exchanges is you can connect your MetaMask wallet and trade directly on Apex from your MetaMask wallet, which is very, very cool. They have many cool features um, on Apex, one of them being uh, the fact they're powered by L2. So Z K rollups make this very fast, very efficient. They have extremely low slippage. I think the slippage on Apex is much better than um, Gains and GMX. Of course, they have different pluses and minuses, but no slippage. They're an order book exchange, so you're trading versus other people. That allows price discovery to happen organically on the DAP itself. Uh, and then there were there are also a few other benefits, like very, very, very low fees, and um, it's obviously non-custodial. So you keep hold of your own assets, which is very important in this day and age, especially in 2020 in crypto. So if you do want to trade on Apex, there's also a link in the description. I know there's a lot of links, but I feel like there's something for everyone in this video. So whether you're a trader or whether you want to connect to a wallet, um, there's something for everyone. And I hope like this video did uh, a, a good job of kind of explaining the pros and the cons of all the wallets in crypto and giving you some options. This is a space to look out for, not just in terms of usability, but also um, in terms of your investments, because there are going to be products which innovate in this space, which are some of the top performers of the next cycle, in my opinion, because we 
we always know each cycle, the Projects that solve the biggest problems, they oftentimes have the biggest gains. And I would say that last cycle, one of the problems was and still is uh, the UI and the pain point that having a seed phrase and having these wallets provides you. Um, So I do think there is a lot of room for innovation in this space. I'm excited to see what happens, uh, but I also think it's very important to be using the right wallet now for your needs and maybe even consider diversifying. I mentioned that earlier in the video. If you're just on MetaMask, there's nothing wrong with having a MetaMask and having a block wallet and having a trust wallet and having an exodus for your Bitcoin and it's all on a Tracer and Ledger. There's nothing wrong with doing that because although it's a little more housekeeping on, you know, keeping track of where your funds are, it's going to mean if there's ever an exploit to one specific application like MetaMask or there's some big IP leak or something, you are going to have your funds spread out and you're going to be safe. So diversifying across multiple wallets is a safe idea in my opinion. And it's something that I would consider doing if I were you, at least I certainly am. But I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed, smash the like button and turn on notifications for more crypto content. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.